So you might have seen me make a couple of videos about this side project I've been working on, but basically I'm working on something to allow people to create videos based on their stories that they're writing. And this is niche down for like a scary story generator, but I'm going to expand this a little bit more and just do any type of stories you want to do. So let me just demo this out real quick and then I'm going to talk about my current solution and then also talk about like where I plan to go in the future. We're going to create a scary story and I'm just going to grab something off of Reddit. I'm not going to actually publish this because obviously I don't want to like copyright their story and try to like make money off of it. I just want to demo how this works. Let's grab an existing story and right now we have the uh, generate page where you can paste in your story. You have about 10,000 characters total and it gives you an estimate of how many credits this story is going to use. So the longer the story, the more segments there are, which means the more AI generated artwork, which obviously costs money and I use credits. So this is a credit system type of thing. I'm still trying to work out like the perfect um, tuning of like how many credits should you get for $5, $10, etc. But after you submit the story, what's happening is that this is firing off a bunch of asynchronous jobs to break apart your story into segments. And then it creates images using replicate for all those different segments. So you'll see here we have this one's actually one of the biggest stories I've tried. This is about 33 segments long. Um, some of these segments are probably a little smaller than I would want them to be. Like this one's like one sentence. And so I'd probably just grab this segment and actually just put it right there. And then I would probably just like delete this segment like that, which will reorder everything and then go through here. You can modify segments. You can add segments in between like other segments and I can refine the text if I want to so I can have AI basically rewrite this segment if I want to. I can also regenerate this prompt. So if there's a part of the story that's too graphic or something, or you want to like change the artwork, you can kind of do that. Um, let's just scroll through and just see if there's anything else that we should maybe get rid of. This one seems like a pretty silly segment, especially since this one over here does like the same thing. So let's delete that one. This looks like a good thing to end with. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like use that as my last one. Okay, so let's just go through and make sure everything has an image. This one's missing an image for some reason, so I'm going to go ahead and just change the prompt and regenerate it. Again, generating a new image, it uses Replicate, which costs money. And so everything that you can do in the system that touches AI, it's going to use some of your credits. So I'm just going to go ahead and regenerate that image. I don't know why it failed. I could probably go into my Convex logs. By the way, everything I'm doing in this app is using Convex. Um, I just I can just move so fast using it, so I do like it a lot. I don't know why it failed. Something in here failed. Um, again, this is like my first release of this project. So we got to like make sure it's better at some point. So this one looks like I could probably combine that. Anyway, so that's the um, the overview of the story building portion. So now when you're done building your story, you have the images where you want them, you can go ahead and generate a video. So what this does is it's going to kick off a Lambda for every single segment that you had. So I had like 33 of them. There gonna be 33 different Lambdas running, trying to generate a smaller MP3, uh, MP4 video for the segment. And right now it's running on like a Lambda that has 10 gigabytes of memory, which means it has like six virtual cores. So I can basically, for every segment, I can split that into six node workers that go through and build out the image, uh, sorry, build out the video really fast. And then I use FFmpeg to basically generate all of the, uh, the videos from the images that get created. And finally I stitch them together. So if we go back to our data, go to job segments, you'll see all these things currently in pending. Um, but every segment is slowly getting finished inside the Lambda functions. And at some point, all of them will be completely done. And then we'll be able to basically look at the video. So let's just go here and find status of pending to see how many are left. We got three more segments left. And as it finishes all those MP4s, it stores them into convex storage. And then when they're all done, it's going to kick off another task that basically stitch them all together. There's an FFmpeg concat command you can use. So it's right now it's like a Lambda is running. It's pulling down all those videos and stitching them together. And if this worked well, which I think it will, it, we have a video, seven minute long video, and we can actually watch through it now. All right. So we have like a Ken Burns effect for all the different, um, let me turn this down a little bit. We got a Ken's burn effect for all the different sections. And you see it kind of zooms in and just tells the story over the entire thing. So that's about it. So now I have this video, I can download it. I can upload to my YouTube channel if I wanted to. And people can start watching it. Now there are some finishing touches I want to add to this. Like I want to add some background music to the video that you could potentially upload as a user or just have a checkbox that say you want to add some creepy background music. Now, because my channel is mainly for education, I do want to walk you through my engineering process of how I like set all this stuff up. 
this this diagram is going to get a little bit a uh, little bit nasty. So if you want to learn something, stick around. So when a user clicks on that initial button when they want to generate the story and they upload their script, this is calling a convex mutation called like generate uh, story, and that's like a mutation, and that calls an action to basically some um, generate segments. I might call this create story. So this is going to create the actual story data structure, and then I use AI. So let's just do like open AI here. And we use OpenAI to basically pass the entire story and say, hey, I need you to, in your best judgment, break this long story that was like 8,000 characters into segments. So we'll get back a, a JSON structure of segments. So we get back a bunch of segments. I'll say like JSON get back segments. And then inside of this um, action, this is actually going to be an action, we loop over all of those segments. So we get back an array, we loop over them, and we actually fire off tons of different actions so we can schedule stuff and fire them off so we're basically firing off 33 different actions behind the scene to generate segment image okay and this is again this is an action that's scheduled now the way this works is we are calling replicate i'm going to use open ai for the image because i don't think there's a replicate icon here but we basically say hey i need to for all these things that are running like this is going to spin up 33 of these things for every single one contacts replicate and it basically says, generate me an image. In fact, I think there's a step before this. I think the first step is um, generate a prompt that describes this segment. And then it generates an image. So that's kind of like what's going on. Um, so it's actually making a call to OpenAI first. And then it makes a call to replicate to generate the image. So we'll get back the image here. And this calls a mutation to basically store that information when it's all done. Um, but hopefully you get the idea, right? So step one is take the story, break into segments. Step two is generate an, a prompt that describes that segment. And then I pass that description into replicate, which is why you're seeing, um, if I go back to my story, you'll see like uh, if I change the prompt, all this AI generated this prompt for me based on the story that it kind of read. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, once I have all the segments set up, a user can come through and they can basically regenerate a prompt or regenerate the text. That is just going to call again some more open AI and um, some replicate. This is basically a single action that I can just rerun. So like I'll just from the UI, I call an action, say, hey, rerun this stuff, and that'll regenerate based on a prompt. Um, but that's the first step. Now the second step is how do I generate the actual MP4s? Because this is actually a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and say user they want to generate the video. So that's step one. They click on generate video. And that is going to call a create video mutation. And again, even if you're not using convex, like the same idea applies to whatever you uh, plan to do. And so this is going to create the data structure, which is why I was redirected to my videos. And then you just see a pending here. So it's like it's generating the background because it created this. Now, I believe at this point, what happens is I actually have um, some other stuff using SQS and lambdas because I don't believe you can run FFmpeg inside of convex actions or mutations. So I kind of had to pull in some uh, some extra magic on the side to get this going. But basically, this is going to produce send events for each segment. Okay, so this sends off a bunch of events, and then that's getting put on a queue. So if you don't know what a queue is, it's something that we use a lot in web development for asynchronous processing. Basically, send stuff to a queue. It'll get picked up later. And in my case, we're going to pick it up by a segment lambda. Okay, so we have a segment lambda that's reading from this queue. And what this is doing is basically running a 10 gigabyte uh, lambda function, which has about six virtual CPUs. And then it's going to download the image. So if I go ahead and bring back like a database or something, this is going to bring back the image from convex. I'll just call it the convex store. Uh, you can actually store files in convex, which is why one of the reasons I really like it. it just makes it easier than having to pull an S3. So we download the image that was used for that segment. And then this is going to run a bunch of code to basically run node canvas. And it generates each frame in the segment. So it's going to loop over and create thousands of frames and store that on the uh, the Lambda's temp directory. And then after it's done generating all those those files, right? So it's turning through and it's like scaling the image up using a Ken's burn effect. It's adding the, the it's burning in the um, the transcripts. Like when we watch the video, it has like the, the, the words that show up on the screen. So I'm doing all that in code. 
I know FFmpeg has ways that you can pass it transcripts and it'll like render them to the screen for you. Um, I at one point I wanted to add in like the effect of having the words be different colors as they're being read out. So I don't know if you can do that in FFmpeg, but if you can, go ahead and let me know. Okay, but anyway, this is basically looping through and it's doing a bunch of work and it's actually running these in like node workers. So I have like multiple of these things running on the Lambda at once doing a bunch of concurrent processing. And it's basically generating a bunch of images which I could basically get an image here and it's storing that to disk. Okay, so all these are running, generating images for every single frame. I'll say like frame 0001.jpg. And then eventually it's done. And what it needs to do is it runs FFmpeg to generate a video. So it runs FFmpeg. I have a Lambda image using Docker that has FFmpeg installed as a binary. So if I showed you my Docker file, it like installs all this different stuff so I can run FFmpeg inside of Lambda. And then it basically takes all the frames and it combines them into a single uh, image. It also downloads the the audio. You notice that when you watch the video, there's someone reading. Uh, I don't I didn't talk about that, but for every segment, I also generate a um, generate text to voice. Okay, I think that's using Whisper. So again, that's pulled in and that's stored to convex storage as well. And then later on, this lambda is going to fetch that when it's doing its processing. It fetches the image. It fetches the fetch image, uh, the voice, and then I think it also fetches the words, so like the transcript. I've lost track of what step this is, but that's what that's doing. And so basically a video file gets created, and again, we store that video back in the convex storage. And so now we have like 33 segments that are all doing this because lambdas can scale up and do this like concurrently, right? So we have like 33 of these lambdas that all spin up one per, per segment. Every lambda has about six workers in it that's doing this process as fast as I can. And eventually we get a video per segment. So I say like segment video. And we store that back on Convex storage. Now finally, when the very last one runs because Convex is ACID compliant. And so when that last segment finishes, it runs a mutation to update my database to say, hey, we're, we finished the last segment. This is going to kick off another uh, SQS event. So I'm going to go ahead and say SQS. And we'll call this the finalizer queue. Okay, so this publishes a, uh, an event to a finalizer queue, which again gets picked up by another Lambda. So I'll say like finalizer Lambda. And this one doesn't have to have as much memory. I think it's like two gigabytes because it doesn't seem like it uses that much memory to concatenate files. And all it does is it basically downloads every single video that we just created uh, in the previous steps. So like remember here, we created all these videos. Well, now it's going to download all videos. So I'll say download all videos. And it downloads like 33 of them. It puts them in the Lambda temp storage and then it concatenates them. So it just basically runs uh, FFmpeg concat. And then it uh, also uses like a text file that lists out what files should be concatenated together. And then finally we get a file. We store that back in the convex storage. And my diagram looks like a diagram of a madman at this point. But that's basically how it works. So then we get the final video that you saw over here, the seven minute long video. That gets stored back and then we notify the user automatically because Convex uses a real-time database. So the moment that video is done, the user can see it pop up on their, their screen. Okay, that's currently how it works. <laughs> so quite a lot going on, um, but I had a hell of a lot of fun building this. So the next steps are like, where, where would I take this? What are the next steps? Because right now this works pretty well. This took maybe a minute or two to run. Um, and the amount that was charged for doing this, maybe a couple pennies for all the Lambda invocations. So it's not too expensive to build these videos, but still the, the user has to wait for a minute or two and maybe that's not the best experience. So the next steps I plan to do are look into other solutions. I know Remotion is one that a lot of people use. They also seem to have like a Lambda solution. So I think they're kind of doing like the exact same thing I just implemented by hand. So I don't even know if I want to like basically use this. The things I want to figure out is like, can they do this faster than what I did on my project? Because mine doesn't take too long to do every segment and stitch them together. There's also one called ReVideo, which again, like you, it seems like you can kind of make videos. But again, both of these libraries, they probably work great, but sometimes like bringing in a third party library and reading through their docs and trying to get it spun up and trying to understand it and then using it and you realize that maybe it doesn't even work as fast as your own solution, right? So this would just take a lot more research and time to like figure out this is a better solution, uh, which I don't even know if I wanna do. Like this works, you literally saw my project work. And so now it's like, do I wanna 
take a step back and see if these existing solutions do this better. Because some of the things that these do provide is that in the browser, I can actually preview the video before it's built. I don't think that's very important, honestly. Like when you see these segments and you know they're gonna get stitched together, like why do you need to preview the video? I don't think you really do. The other approach I could take, which I did uh, post something on Twitter to get some feedback, is instead of doing all this work, it might be a lot faster if I actually just get like a, a dedicated EC2 instance to um, that has like a, a, a GPU, which I think there's like a G4DN instance I could spin up. And this has a graphics processor built into it. So a lot of the stuff I'm doing would probably run a lot faster instead of doing the CPU only approach that I'm doing here. Okay, so my next steps would be, can I just spin up a, a machine with a GPU and do the same stuff? And it just use FFmpeg. I think FFmpeg has built-in commands for doing the Ken Burns effect, which might make this run extremely fast. Okay, so that's one approach I want to go down. The other approach is that there might be solutions, instead of using Node Canvas, which seems like it's not that fast, I could probably rewrite this in Go or Rust and squeeze out more performance. Like right now, I think it takes around like 30 milliseconds per frame, which is which is pretty slow because like for a one minute video, I got to render out about 1500 frames at 25 frames per second. Okay. I think this will give you like 33 frames a second. So to do 1500, I think it's looking at about like 45 seconds or so. So this would be like 45 seconds of processing time. And this is quite a lot of time to do one minute of video processing. So if I could actually scale this down, like if I could get this to run and go, and maybe it does 20 milliseconds per frame. That means I can get about 50 frames rendered a second, which if I were to do this, 1500 divided by 50, that would be 30 seconds. So if I can get this down to 20 milliseconds, that's actually gonna be about 30 seconds of processing time, which, but if you think about it, that's actually shaving off a ton of time for the entire process, okay? If I can get this down to 10 milliseconds per frame. So those are kind of my next steps. And again, you have to think about it. It's like, I have a completely working solution, like this works. Um, it's just a user might have to wait a little bit for their video to finish, which maybe that's not a big deal. Um, and then I have to weigh out the solution of like, will it be more cost effective to have a dedicated EC2 instance with a graphic card? Probably not because they charge you like a dollar or two every hour of running, which is pretty expensive. And then also the cold starts, like I could potentially pause the EC2 instance and then resume it when like I need to process something but that can take up to a minute or two to resume an EC2 instance. And it's like, okay, now my users have to wait two minutes to even like be able to process the video. And we're back to square one of like, this is super slow. So those are some of the things I'm kind of thinking about. And it's like, I think if I could just rewrite this instead of using Node Canvas, find another CPU solution, maybe implement it in Go or Rust, or just, it could be a node still, um, something that just runs faster. And then I can reduce how long it takes to generate a frame. I think that'll be a big win for my existing solution and not have to require a lot of refactoring. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to walk you through what I have implemented, walk you through my engineering of how I set all this up. I know this diagram is crazy, but then also walk you through my thought process of like why I did it this approach. Again, I could literally have a hundred people come to this app right now and try to generate a video at the same time. And all my lambdas will just scale up, right? Nothing will crash on my back end. I won't have to have some type of wait in line queue which is something I don't want to worry about. I don't want to worry about my EC2 instance crashing because four people decided to generate the video at the same time. Uh, that's one thing that Lambda does pretty, pretty dang well. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, I'm open to solutions. Leave a comment if you think there's a better way I can do this. Maybe a dedicated server might be the best approach. But at this point, it's like, I don't have too much time to research the most optimal solution. Like learning Go or Rust and re-implementing this thing might take me a, a whole couple of days. Uh, and then I don't want to be disappointed when it only shaves down the time to generate an image by like five seconds or uh, sorry, five milliseconds. I want like big performance gains and I don't have the time to figure out the best path forward. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about. Have a good day. Happy coding.